Regal Pale, one of America's two great beers, brings you now that fun-loving country music show, Ozark Jubilee. Again, friends, we send you a big Saturday night hello from Springfield, Missouri, in the heart of the Ozark Mountains. It's time for the Ozark Jubilee. Tonight, celebrating its first birthday. And now, here's America's favorite country gentleman, Red Foley! Well, see, boy, we got a good big birthday card back here. We're going to tell you a little more about it. You know, one year ago, at this very minute, we stepped out here in front of all sorts of strange lights and cameras for the first time. And tonight, during our Jubilee birthday party, we're going to do a little reminiscing about the many, many good things that have happened to us in our show since that first time we were on just a year ago tonight. But first, uh, Let's uh, sing a little song that kind of tells the whole story that goes on here at the Ozark Jubilee. And we're going to have, let's have a little music over there, boys, and let's get the gang up on the floor there, huh? Take the fiddle off of the wall, Ross, and love the bow. We'll get the gang together to the sweat as we will go. We'll pull hands around, go to the turkey hit the draw. If you don't have a girl to bring along, you in our car to the Ozark Jubilee. Oh, come along with me. We'll roll a rug back to the wall and dance till the hour of three. At the Ozark Jubilee, how happy we will be. There's lots of fun for everyone at the Ozark Jubilee. Come on, gang. All your hands in circle white. Red hair, black, and old guy high. All the way around and a halfway back when you get home. Turn down the shack. Right on the shack there. I meet your honey and I meet her with a smile all from me. Come and a mile at the old star jubilee. Oh, come along with me. We'll have the rock back to the wall and dance till the hour of three. At the old star jubilee. How happy we will be. There's lots of fun for everyone at the old star jubilee. At the old star Thank you very much. Mm. <laughs> well, as we've gone along through the past 52 weeks, we've had a number of youngsters that <laughs> sing and guess here on the Jubilee. And, of course, the ones that you folks have shown a special liking for, well, we've invited them to come and be with us permanently over here at the crossroads of country music. And such is the case with this pretty little lady with this Swedish sugar southern accent. Miss Tabby West. Tabby West right there. Tabby?
You know, I think you can probably see, friends, that uh, we've got quite a little gathering here for our birthday party tonight. And, uh, of course, we're going to have more, too, because a lot of folks will be coming in as we go along. So since we're going to have a lot of fun, I just wanted to sort of butt in here and tell you that you stick around, because, boy, the Ozark Jubilee is barely underway. Hi, I'm Jim Nars. My Uncle Wilbur just sent me a postcard from up in the mountains. Boy, he never was one to waste words. It says, Dear J. R. S. V. P. Signed, W. First, I thought it was an invitation, but then I, uh, I turned it over and figured it out. The local tavern. Now, the R. S. V. P. stands for Regal Served, Very Popular. Of course, that's easy to figure once you've tried Regal. Because this sociable, light, and mellow brew is popular with everybody. Because it's so bright and refreshing. And, of course, that light, mellow flavor is just so downright good, you can't help wanting one glass after another. Of course, you can enjoy more Regal, too, because it goes down so light and bright and breezy, you never have that stuffy, filled-up feeling. So, look, why not remind yourself to get some more light and mellow Regal? Just jot down the letters 1-O-A-2-G-B. One of America's two great beers. Well, sir, we want you folks to be sure and stay with us for the next about an hour and uh, 40 minutes, hour and uh, 20 minutes, rather. Mr. Ray, yeah? you want on the phone? On the first version? Right over there. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me just a minute. Hello? Oh, Aunt Fanny. My goodness. Who? Huh? Well, for goodness sakes, we, we've been expecting you to drop in just any minute now. Yeah, how, how are you traveling? By plane? No? By car? No? By bus then, huh? No? Well, by train, I bet, huh? No? Oh, well, I see, yeah. Well, of course, if he, if he wants to stop and eat some hay, I'll uh, go ahead and let him. We'll, we'll be waiting for you. Huh? <laughs> yeah, well, you'll be here, though, huh? Oh, well, good. So we, we'll be expecting you a little later. Nice of you to call. Bye, sweet lady. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's going to be here, ain't she? You know, I hope that uh, she sure finds her way here all right, but I'm really sorry that she's not with us right now because I happen to know that last time she was here, she thought that this... Next little man here was just about it. But she says cute as a bug's ear. Here he is. Uh, ain't Fanny? Turn on the television set out there in the buggy if you got one. Here is Bobby Lord. Yes, sir. Bobby Lord. That's all right, Mama.
got some good new records coming out, I heard. You go on over and get I'll, a piece of cake, good boy. Do Don't let them cheat you out now. You know, folks, uh, this week has been an especially rough one for the good old mailman who's had to lug the cards and wonderful letters upstairs to our office. And thanks so much to all of you who have sent us your good wishes for another wonderful year. But you know, I sort of got called down in the mail this week by several folks who said that it's been all together too long since uh, they've had a chance to laugh at the old fellas with the cowbells. So for all you folks, here they are once more, those two old loonies, Lenny and Goo Goo. <laughs> Thank you very much, Red Foley. And we had a lot of letters wanting us to play a little bell number. Yeah, and this tune is going to be about as little as you'll ever hear. <laughs> Our mailman had an awful lot to carry this week, friends, but I, I think he's pretty used to that job by now because, you know, after our very first show just a year ago, we received over 25,000 cards and letters from you folks by the beginning of the next week. Of course, here's something else we're sort of expecting in the mail from you, and that's your request for information on how to visit us here in the heart of the Ozarks. And very, very simple. All you have to do is just drop us a card, put your name and address on one side, and send it to us here at Ozark Jubilee, Springfield, Missouri, because nothing in the world would make us happier than to have you right here with us at the Jubilee in person. Well, this restaurant is certainly doing a terrific business. In fact, they got so many customers, they have a hard time finding room for them. Of course, now, the reason for this popularity is that they serve a nice, cold bottle of Regal with every meal. Now, I don't know if the food is actually any better here, but everybody thinks it is, because any food tastes better with a tall, cool glass of light and mellow Regal. Now, of course, they sell more food that way, too. There's more room for food, because Regal is so bright and refreshing, it never gives you that stuffy, filled-up feeling. And that cool, clean, mellow flavor is just so downright good. It's just what you want in beer. Just the thing to set off the taste of a good steak. So remember, whether you're dining on land, on sea, or in the air, nothing tastes better with or between meals than light and mellow Rigo Pale, one of America's two great beers. You know, so many wonderful things have happened to me in the last year over here in the Ozarks that I feel like I've lived here for many, many years. But I, I want you folks to say hello now. Come out here, will you, old Slim Bo? Say hello to a fellow who actually has been here a long, long time, Slim Bo Wilson. But, uh, I think the truth of the matter is that uh, you was here before the mountains were, weren't you, Slim? They built the mountains around you. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> Yes, see, here's an old boy who's in his 24th year on radio station KWTO in Springfield here. And, uh, Slim, that is quite a record. I hope you stay there 24 more. 
Thank you very much. And I and hope that way, this was our jubilee. On your birthday here, boy. Well, it isn't just mine. I quit having birthdays, but uh, it was our jubilee. This is the first one, Slim. Thank you, buddy. And you're part of it, too, you know. Thank you, Eric. What is this tune? Uh, isn't this a tune you're going to do one that Sonny James wrote mm -hmm. and recorded? That's right. I hope old Sonny's looking in out there called, uh, what is it? Big Tails and Ribbons. Big Tails and Ribbons. Right. Slim up. <laughs> venture to say, Slim, of course, after 24 years on the same radio station, uh, you are one dude that never uses what we call a idiot board to read the <laughs> words off of. Uh, how many songs do you know by memory? Do you have any idea? No, Red, I don't. I really don't. I doubt if I know two, actually. Maybe but five or six hundred. I'll bet so. you do, five or six hundred. <laughs> With a memory like you got, I bet you can remember some of the wonderful people that uh, used to work here at KWTO and who went on to greener pastures, for example. Oh, well, who you got in mind, for instance? Well, why, Les Paul, for one. Les Paul, I remember Les Paul. He used to go by the name of Rhubarb Red. Then. I, I knew him uh -huh. up at WJJD when he used to wear a harmonica around his neck yeah. and pick that thumb G <laughs> and uh, play the harp and some coming around the mountain. And I'll tell you another two that's really done wonderful, Homer and Jethro. They used oh, to be. Oh, yeah. marvelous boys, you betcha. Uh, how about uh, a boy who used to sing with you and everybody around here that uh, people knew him as uh, Freckles? Uh, Freckles? Mm -hmm. Oh, a little bit of a tyke. Had to stand on a box to right. reach the microphone. Yeah. Little Freckles. Played That's hot right. guitar, too. Yeah. Uh -huh. Of course, uh, Freckles is, was his, his nickname then, but of course he's gone on now to much bigger things and has become world famous with his wonderful recording, Slim. And he has a different, different nickname. I started saying a different nickname now. <laughs> a different nickname now. That name happens to be Rusty Draper. Oh, no. Yes, sir. That's oh. it. Yes, sir. Oh, really? Is that now? <laughs> oh, oh, Hi, Rusty. Hi, Red. No need of me introducing oh, you to this Slim Wilson. It's been a long right? time. Freckles? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Slim, take this hold and I'll tell you what I'm going to do back here, because you told me to do it now. <laughs> okay. I used Freckles. to visit you when I was going to school up in Camden. Oh, oh I forget that. Where you been lately, though? Well, I've been in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. and uh, I wonder if it'd be all right if I said a little red to all the folks in Washington, D.C. You already did it. <laughs> <laughs> what is Slim? this for? Well, I took Slim at his word. He said you used to play pretty hot guitar when you didn't know. a bitty boy. <laughs> So I think maybe that uh, uh, in as much, I mean, they, all, they know you as a singer, yeah. not a guitar player. People, I think, including me, are always interested in the things you're not best known for, Rusty. Well, so I could play through four bars, bars here. Huh? Give us a little boogie. Yeah. Right there, right there. That is sort of short and sweet, but as I said before, I'm sure the folks that probably 
Ray, even though you play that thing wonderfully, they'd probably rather hear you sing some of the wonderful songs that you have made such success, big successes with on your MG. Not uh, Mercury <laughs> Records. <laughs> One of them that, uh, Rusty, that I thought you just did a wonderful job on. Beautiful, beautiful song called Shifting, Whispering Sand. Well, we'll try to do it for him. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Listen to the angel story of the shifting, whispering sand. Yes, it always whispers to me of the days of long ago. When the settlers and the miners fought the crafty Navajo, how the cattle roamed the valley, happy people worked the land, but now everything is covered by the shifting springs. How the miner left his buckboard, went to work his claim that day. And the burros broke their halters when they thought he was gone. How they found the angel of lying dead upon the sand. After months they could but wonder if he died by human hands. So they dug his grave and laid it on his back and crossed him. And his secret still lies hidden by the shifting whispering. What they whispered to me way out on that white desert air of the people and the cattle and that mine who lie there. If you want to learn the sea, wander through this quiet land, and I'm sure you will hear. Story of the shifting spring sands, the shifting whispering sands. We'll be visiting again with Rusty Draper just a little later on, friends, but for the present moment, I believe it's somebody else's turn to do the talking. I've just been stargazing with my new telescope, and you know it's amazing how this thing brings everything so close. Look, there's there's Saturn and Venus and a guy shaving. <clears throat> and there's Mars. They look at those happy, fun-loving Martians drinking Rigo Pale. <laughs> that just goes to show you that Rigo Pale is really out of this world. Of course, you don't need a telescope to see how much fun folks are having drinking Rigo. Just drop into any tavern, or better yet, look at yourself in the mirror with that cheery tumbler of this light and mellow brew. When that clean, cool, regal flavor hits your taster, it puts a mile in your smile. So, uh, why not be at your happy best in case somebody on Mars is watching you? Look around real soon for some light and mellow regal pale, one of America's two great beers. Well, we'd like for you folks to just stay right there where you are because we've got some wonderful people for you to meet a little later on in the person of wonderful columnist Mr. Earl Wilson and, uh, of course, one of your all-time favorites, Aunt Fanny. Uh, we'll be here in just a little while. Right now, we'd like for you to <clears throat> sort of come over here and meet three handsome and beautiful girls 
These are all brothers, this brother and two sisters. This is Jim Edward. This is Maxine, and that is Bonnie. And you have augmented, I think, as Uncle Sapp says, you have augmented your duet tonight, Jim Ed? Yes. Trio. To a trio, trio. uh-huh. And you know something that I've been hearing? Yes, sir. I have been hearing that Uncle Sam is breathing right down your collar, boy, lately. Is that yes, right? Yes, my Uncle Sam is getting awful close. <laughs> well, of course, if he uh, should breathe down there and you pass your, you passed your physical already? Yes, sir. I sure am. Well, <clears throat> That will be our loss for a little while, but it will be your gain, too. Uh, well, Mr. Foley, I hope that uh, when I do get a pass that you will still let me come back up here and say hi to all the folks out there. In the event you go in, do you have any idea where they might station you? Yes, sir. Uh, they will station me at Camp Chaffee. That's down at Fort Smith, just a little ways from here. How far? It's, I would say, uh, about 120 or 25 miles. Oh, well, you can jump in the buckboard and skedaddle up here. Well, sure maybe that'll let you still stay with us. I mean, I you're not so. gone yet. And no, not yet. Because we're going to miss the kind of singing that the, this little brown family does here. Thank Jim you. Edward, you got a song, I think, that our good buddy Ray Price has got a big record on called Run, Boy. We sure do. That's the one. Here we go. birthday party with still more special guests yet to arrive is coming to you live from the heart of the Ozark Mountain region in Springfield, Missouri. <laughs> Regal Pale, one of America's two great beers, thanks you for joining us this week on Ozark Jubilee. And now, here's Regal Pale's Thought for the Week. Don't burn all your bridges behind you, or you won't be able to get back home and enjoy a Regal.